Welcome back, everybody. Last night, a team of researchers said nearly 70 drugs might be effective in treating coronavirus. Some of the medications are already being used to treat other diseases. One, called chloroquine, was heavily talked about last week during a coronavirus task force briefing. It's used to treat malaria and some other conditions. The president called it a game changer. But the nation's top infectious disease expert gave a swift warning, saying the evidence the president was talking about was just anecdotal. This morning, we are hearing exclusively from a local doctor who says he successfully treated a COVID-19 patient using a similar drug. Dr. Danny Polito, a pulmonary and critical care specialist at Baptist Beaches Center, joins us this morning. Dr. Polito, you posted this outcome to Facebook this weekend, and so far it has been shared more than 6,000 times. This is really giving people some hope. And just talking with you a minute ago, you said there's a lot out there that should give people hope. Good morning, yes, and thank you for having me here. I just uh, wanted to emphasize the, both to uh, treatment for patients with COVID, both for the community and for healthcare providers to understand that there are treatment regimens that are utilized and being discussed at a variety of different uh, levels, both in the Baptist Health System, national and international. So when we had this patient present and the decision ultimately with the discussion with our infectious disease colleagues that we should go ahead and treat, we came up with the best protocol based off what we can gather at the time and we decided to use the regimen of hydroxychloroquine with the combination of zinc for the treatment of this patient. Talk about what the patient's symptoms were because you said he came in, really had no other risk factors except for his age, but his symptoms progressed very quickly. Exactly, and obviously for patient privacy, I'm not gonna specifically talk about the patient himself, but uh, he, is a six, he was a 68-year-old gentleman who presented, he had a fairly healthy background, no comorbidities that you, we would hear. Uh, no, he was not diabetic, he didn't have heart failure, didn't have COPD. He worked at home and he really uh, denied any risk factors for COVID. So he was very low on our scale for uh, potential for COVID patient. But fortunately for our team and for the patient himself, we went ahead and decided to, to isolate and to screen for him. Uh, given the fact that on presentation, his, present his presenting symptoms was shortness of breath and cough, for a week prior to his arrival to the hospital, he tried calling the, his primary care, but his primary care was told him, basically told him that they were overwhelmed and that he should go to the hospital. At the presentation, he was originally found to have low oxygen levels. Uh, at the time requiring about three to four liters of oxygen. So the decision was to bring him to the ICU for close observation, monitor him with all the posit uh, with the personal protective equipment that we have for the healthcare, and to initially what we did was to treat as a potential just bacterial bronchitis plus minus pneumonia. Right, and you said you got him tested for COVID. Those test results weren't in when you really started to see the escalation. We have a picture that you have given us that really shows what his lungs look like from day one and then day four. So explain what we're looking at here. Correct. So over the period of, of the next few days while he was in the hospital, he had a, a decline of his respiratory status and how we define a de decline in, in his status, which was an increase in oxygen demand. His oxygen levels when he first came in, he was needing about two to three to four liters of oxygen. But over time, his oxygen requirements kept going up to from 30%, 40%, 50%, and we ended up having to put him up to 100% oxygen just so he can maintain some degree of stability. At that point, we were, uh, his progression of chest x-rays from what you saw, his initial chest x-ray was fairly uh, unremarkable, just a, a mild, a slight abnormality at the right base, but his progression of chest x-ray three days down the road shows a, a significant difference with patchy infiltrates of, on both sides of his lungs. Right. And all the red that you're seeing there on the screen, all of that is inflammation. So at that point, you knew you had to act quickly. Why did you pick this particular treatment? Well, given the fact that he was on a good antibiotic regimen, he was not responding. So we decided, I decided to take, uh, to go ahead and get a CAT scan of the patient. And that CAT scan, which was shown in the picture on the bottom right, it will, it's what basically it's classically been reported as COVID radiographic CAT scan findings. Based off that CAT scan is what I ultimately decided to go ahead and treat. Uh, interesting point, he did, he was a low risk factor. He didn't have the blood tests that was consistent with uh, a COVID type patient. 
and no other signs pointed to COVID except for that CAT scan. So for me and for my, from what I took from this uh, presentation, you have to look at all aspects of the patient care and decide with all the information that you have at bedside to go ahead and ultimately treat or not treat based off what you have. Right. So with that CAT scan, we ultimately decided to put this patient on a regimen. And what you explained to me this weekend is that what happens with COVID is that the inflammation of the disease replicates so quickly that what this drug did was slow that down a little bit so the body could create its own antibodies to fight it. And you're saying, you know, this isn't necessarily the only thing, but there are other things that are working. But again, giving patients hope that there is something out there that could potentially save their lives. Thank you so much for sharing this story today. We hope the patient's doing better. You said he should be out of the hospital very soon, right? Yes, now, since we've started therapy, uh, about four days now on therapy, his oxygen requirements have now come down to where he's, he's actually off oxygen and walking around his, uh, in the room. So he's feeling a whole lot better now. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, Dr. Polito, for talking with us and sharing this inspirational story. Back Pleasure. to you, Bruce Jen. Thank you.